Okay, so welcome everybody. Um, I'm Andrew Lawrence King. Um, this is an event um, promoted by Opera Omnia in Moscow and in collaboration with the Guildhall School of Music and Drama in London. And Katia Liberova is translating into Russian. Uh, we're on Zoom and also on YouTube. You'll get the best sound quality on YouTube, but if you want to be in conversation, then you need to be on Zoom. If you're um, on Zoom, please would you mute your microphone except when you're talking. That will keep the sound quality higher for everybody else. And um, the YouTube version will be online as a video afterwards. So if you miss something, or there was something that wasn't very good reception, don't worry, um, there'll be this YouTube video afterwards. Available on video afterwards will be a very quick summary of the musical techniques part. And the third thing that will be available afterwards will be the video that lets you join in for our multi-track recording. If you're listening on YouTube only, the long pauses between the things I say, are because I'm giving time for Katya to translate into Russian for our Zoom listeners in Russia. So you can use those moments to meditate or drink your tea. So how this workshop's going to work, um, we're welcoming you all now, you're very welcome. And I'm going to do an introduction to the work, Ludus Danielis, the play of Daniel. And then we're going to do a class on one chorus from that work. For the class part, you're going to need the music for this chorus. And if you didn't already download it, you'll find it on the Opera Omnia Facebook page. Now, it's a bit strange doing a workshop online um, because if you're on YouTube, I can't hear you at all quality is so terrible and I certainly can't listen to all of you at once. So the way we do it is I will do a little bit of teaching and then when it's time for you to play, you just play but with your microphones turned off. And after you've played, I will tell you, oh, you were wonderful. I will go on to the next idea. If, if, if something goes a bit too fast for you, don't worry because you can always check the videos afterwards. How the uh, recording is going to work, that's going to happen after this event. This evening, I'm going to put up online a video that gives the instructions of how you do the recording. And on this video, I'm playing the track. So you listen to this video on headphones on one device you play or sing together with me and you record on a second device. Listen to my video with headphones because we don't want to record that again. So you record just yourself, you send your track and I will mix everything together. If you send a track to us, we will use it for this group multi-track thing which will go out free on YouTube. So if you send us a track, you have given us permission to do this. Questions so far, or are we doing okay? Great. Then um, welcome to the people who've just joined us. And um, uh, just, to, just to say again, if you're using Zoom, keep your microphone switched off until you want to talk in the conversation. That keeps the sound quality high. And this evening, there will be three videos available. There'll be the video from the YouTube stream of this event. There'll be a quick summary video of the main technical points. And there'll be this video to make the recording and gives you the backing track for that recording. So for the people who came early, you've now heard all that information about 10 times, and I hope everybody's heard it at least once. So here we go, Ludus Danielis. Um, I'm going to talk about the piece, the story that it tells about the original event back in medieval times, 
and about our production this autumn. So the um, pioneering edition in the 1960s was by um, an English editor, um, Smolden, for the Plain Song Medieval Music Society. And he called it a medieval opera. It's a good description. So um, although the um, description medieval opera is not very academic, it's actually a good description because this piece is, it's medieval and it's really like an opera. It's like an opera because we have music, we have drama, and we have movement and we have characters. And the, the actors of this drama were the monks in the cathedral. And the story they tell comes from the Bible, from the book of Daniel. At this time, the Jewish nation has been captured and is in Babylon as slaves. And the king of Babylon is Belshazzar. Belshazzar decides to have a great big party and to use for this party the sacred vessels, the cups and plates from the Jewish temple. Of course, this is a terrible disrespect. And so God is going to punish him. So in the middle of this party, suddenly a right hand appears and starts to write on the wall. And the hand writes, Mene Tegel Fares. Nobody can understand what it means. So the king calls for his wise men. Now there's a nice um, comic scene because the wise men are stupid, it means. So the king calls his wife. You have to think about this scene because this is in a monastery. And so where we have this group of boys and men making this drama, somebody is dressed up very fine as the queen of Babylon. The queen advises that they should ask Daniel. And so they go out to look for Daniel. And now here's another special scene because this is the night in this medieval French cathedral. And it's the young people, the teenagers and young boys of the cathedral who are organizing this whole drama. So now they have a nice game of hide and seek. They have to go and find Daniel. Daniel was probably played by the choir master and Daniel is somewhere in this huge cathedral and they have to find him in the dark. So, uh, when they speak to Daniel, Daniel is supposed to speak Hebrew, but nobody in northern France really knew much Hebrew. The whole play is in Latin. And so when they speak to Daniel, they use their own French. So Daniel comes and he explains what this writing means, which is that Belshazzar is going to die. Now, the way the whole drama works is every time somebody comes on stage, this is in the cathedral, so they make a procession around the cathedral. So if you think we've already had the arrival of King Belshazzar, there's a procession. Then we had a procession to bring these temple vessels and use them. We had a procession for the queen to come and another one for Daniel. And now there's a procession for Daniel to go home and another one to take away the sacred vessels. And now King Belshazzar is waiting on the stage. Ah, the queen also goes home. Belshazzar is there. And at this moment, the opposing army of the Medes and Persians arrives. Two of the soldiers rush ahead and kill King Belshazzar. And now King Darius sits on the throne. All this playing around with authority is great fun in the cathedral because it's the young people who are taking charge. And so one of these young people is playing the king and sitting not in the king's throne, but in the bishop's throne of the cathedral.
Now they advise that this new king should also fetch Daniel. And so there's another procession for Daniel again. Then the evil counselors come, the bad guys. And they advise the king to make a law that if anybody prays to God and not the king, then that person should be thrown into the lion's den. So, of course, Daniel goes and prays. They see him. They tell Darius and they throw Daniel into the lion's den. Luckily, an angel comes and with a sword holds back the lions so that Daniel is safe. And another angel comes and brings the prophet Habakkuk, who brings some lunch for Daniel, who must be hungry there in the lion's den. And another angel brings the prophet Habakkuk with a snack for Daniel. And now the king comes very sadly and wonders if Daniel's still going to be alive. And Daniel is still alive, and so they bring out Daniel, and they throw in the bad guys. And the lions eat the bad guys. So um, in this show, the part of the lion is really good fun. Now Daniel makes his prophecy that soon it will be Christmas, and another angel, angel number three, another angel comes and says, yes, it's Christmas already. And everybody sings the Te Deum very happily. And that's the end of the drama. And it very cleverly goes back into the normal liturgy, into the service of the church with this Te Deum. Because although we've been calling this a medieval opera, it's actually part of the whole liturgy of this particular day in the church. And it's a way that the church allowed the people to have a lot of fun, but still telling a Bible story. They could have a lot of fun and play games that normally they would not be allowed to do in the cathedral. So they're having this whole party um, in the church. They're playing hide and seek in the church. They're running in the church. They're dressing up and they are pretending to kill important people in the church hierarchy. For today's musicologists, most shocking of all, they're playing instruments. So for our production, we want to give the audience this feeling, first of all, that they've come to see the normal liturgy. And we're going to transform the big foyer of Theatre Sats into a French medieval cathedral where the monks are singing the night service like they sing every night. The same that they sing every night, every day of the week, every month, every year. And just as the audience are getting very bored, suddenly this normal liturgy is broken as somebody arrives to announce the beginning of the play. And in Latin, in English, and also in Russian, this word play for the drama, it's also play that we are having a good time, we're having a party, we are playing games in the cathedral. If you've just joined us, you're watching this Opera Omnia workshop on Ludus Danielis, and we're coming now to the music and to the practical part. And the, if you're watching on YouTube, the silences between my sentences are while we get simultaneous translation in Russian for our Russian listeners on Zoom. So the music of this medieval play if you look at it quickly, it just looks like more plain chant, more of the liturgical 
when you look in more detail, the, there are melodies there which are quite different from the normal plain chant. And a few of these melodies we have been able to identify, we know their um, melodies that already existed. And so we think that many of these melodies actually were popular tunes that were cleverly. The play was assembled, we think, at the end of the 12th century, so in the late 1100s but it was written down a little bit later in the early 13th century. And what we have as the surviving score is a very beautiful manuscript, which is now in the British Library in London. And it has the music, the rubric telling you how to move, what to do in this drama. These, um, liturgical manuscripts always have this, these kind of instructions. Normally they would say something like, now the priest kneels down and makes the sign of the cross. But in this play, the instructions are things like, they throw the evil counselors into the pit and the lions eat them. An important element of the manuscript though is the text, all the words that go with this music. So they're taking popular tunes, they're writing new words that allow them to use these tunes to tell the Daniel story. And the, the words are very beautifully and cleverly written. So they have lots of references to Daniel's past experiences and to future prophecies. So it's a very rich text. It's written in Latin, of course, but most of it is written in rhyming verse. This is a, a style which they called conductus. So the first idea is that you're in the cathedral and you have to walk from point A to point B and so you need to walk in a certain way. And so they made music that had a regular beat that would be good for walking to. And to suit this music, they wrote poems that had a very strong meter that could be sung to music with a strong beat. So now we've got words and music with a strong beat that makes it very easy to improvise together because the beat will keep us together. So this word conductus means the way to walk, the music with a beat, the poetry with a rhythm, and polyphony, whether improvised. In this play, the monks were playing different characters, so they walk in different ways. They have their normal way to walk in the cathedral as monks. Then they walk as if they are the courtiers of King Belshazzar, or the queen and her ladies, or the wise men who were very stupid. Then they make a procession to carry the temple vessels. Then an army of soldiers arrives and kills the king. So all these different groups move in different ways. They all have their own conductors. And, and each social group has its own way to make medieval gestures of the hand. For our production in September, we will um, be studying, of course, the words and the music, but also these different ways to move and to gesture in different medieval styles. The text is in Latin. It's Latin as pronounced in the north of France around the year 1200. The uh, Latin scholar Harold Coatman 
made this uh, pronunciation chart for us. And I have to tell you that, I have to tell you when Harold first gave us this, these very strange ideas, we were quite skeptical. We didn't really believe it. It was so strange. But little by little, we found all kinds of its internal rhymes and little confirmation. It was absolutely right. In fact, maybe it needs to go even further. So um, let's dive in and look at some of that text straight away. So we're now into workshop mode. And um, I'm not going to be able to hear you. So I'll give you a chance to say or sing your bit. And um, I won't hear it, so I'll just say, wonderful, and we'll carry on. In hoc natalitiu. We'll go. In hoc natalitiu. You were fantastic. Here we go. Daniel cum gaudio. Daniel cum gaudio. Te laudat et cunciu. So far, pretty easy. When you say this um, cum, Daniel cum gaudio, it's not the normal u, it's u. Daniel cum gaudio. Now we're carrying on. Cum godentes. Cum godentes. Now we begin to have some fun. Celebremos. Celebremos. Cum godentes celebremos natali solemnia. Cum gaudentes celebremus natali solemnia. Iam de morte nos redemit Dei sapientia. Iam de morte nos redemit Dei sapientia. Homo natus echt in carne. That's really weird. Um, homo natus est in carne. Echt, not est, but echt. Homo natus echt in carne, qui creavit unia. Nascitudum quem predicit profete facundia. Nascitudum quem predicit profete facundia. Danielis jam quiesavit, this quie again. Danielis jam quiesavit. Unctionis copia. Danielis, Danielis jam quiesa, unctionis copia. Quiesat rechni, quiesat rechni. Judeorum contumax potentia. Quiesi, re, sorry, quiesat rechni, judeorum Contumax potentia. This next bit we know. In hoc natalitiu, Daniel cum gaudio, de laudat et cuncio. In hoc natalitiu, Daniel cum gaudio, de Now, singers are always very concerned to get all those vowel sounds and consonants just right. And that's good. But for the music, what's even more important is the accents and the meaning. And that's what instrumentalists also need to study, the accents and the meaning. So accents and the meaning, and also how the words join together or separate. So, in hoc natalitio, natalitio, it's not in hoc natalitio, with all of those accents. In the next little phrase, danie cum gaudio, there's a little comma, danie cum gaudio, te laudat e cuncio. Super, Katia, that's really good. So, uh, in this Christmas time, natalitio, Daniel, we know who he is. If we were doing gestures, turn to him. Cum gaudio, with happiness. So this tells us how to play. 
when we play or sing this congordio, we just want to sing it, play it happily. Te laudat, we praise you, he cuncio, with this group of people. So there again, we've got interesting gestures. Te laudat, we're gesturing for you. And then he cuncio is us, the party of people who've come to sing this song. All together, we celebrate this solemn Christmas. Now God uh, redeems us from death. Homo natus, God is born as man. Naskitu, as the prophets told. Danielis, uh, this line is that now, because there's going to be Jesus as the king, the old will be finished. It's okay. So uh, because Jesus is going to come at Christmas, there will be no more ordinary kings. And so the old custom where Daniel the prophet would pour the holy oil onto the king's head, this is going to finish. And so you see how the text is a mixture of the story right now and the Christmas story, which is going to happen, and also parts of Daniel's life story, which have already happened. So let's get on with the music. So here's the first phrase, in hoc natalizio. That's where you'll be shocked with the wonderful, glorious quality of Zoom sound, if that's what you're listening to. Here's that first phrase again. One, two, three, four. Wonderful. The second phrase, Daniel cum Gordio, it's the same music. One, two, three, Daniel. And the third phrase is the same music again, De Laudat. And this. You were fantastic. You were so good and amazingly together, and there was nothing out of tune. All those three phrases. One, two, three, four. Very good. And just to have some fun, um, and this is something we, we can perhaps keep for the recording. Um, could we have high voices on the first phrase and low voices on the second phrase and everybody on the third phrase? Two, three. Great, very good. As I'm watching the Zoom, I see something of the time delay. So um, I hope you're having fun, but we could to possibly do this and listen to each other at the same time. But I've just, I've just had a good idea. Let's break the internet. Everybody turn your microphones on and we'll just do this once all together. It will be terrible and then we'll carry on. So all turn your microphones on and here we go. Ready, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. One, two, three, four. Turn those microphones off again, switch off. <laughs> but it's very nice to hear that there's real people there. That's really great. Turn that microphone off. <laughs> okay, um, let's quickly get through the rest of the chat. So here we go. Uh, here's Con Gaudentes. I'll play the, the, the tune Con Gaudentes. And Yam de Morte is the same music, so I'll play these two and then you can sing along or sing back. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. One more go. One, two, three, four. Next phrase. 
phrase is the same, but upper fifth. Homonatus. One, two, three, four. Time works that way. Good, good. And the last phrase is the same as the beginning. So the low version. Daniel is yam kesavit. One, two, three, four. And now we sing again the uh, refrain. When we come to make the recording, we will make an instrumental verse here after the refrain, after um, Te Laudat He Cuncio. We make an instrumental verse. At the end of the instrumental, we carry on into verse two, which begins tu very usefully, tu Susanam. You'll find the whole text um, online. And so I'm not going to work on that now because what I want to work on is the um, improvising ideas. So when we, we have the idea that we sing in, in unison, what this word unison really means is that everybody sings exactly the same so that the high voices, the trebles for us, and the men would be singing up high to sing the same actual note. Like pop singers do today, where women in general sing low and men sing high, they sing very often at the same pitch. Of, of course, it's completely fine to sing in octaves so that, that the men sing an octave lower. It's completely okay to sing in octaves so that the men sing an octave lower. No problem, that's good. But it could just as easily be fifths. And so the first thing to do is to try singing not only parallel octaves, but parallel fifths. So let's take where we start with congodentes. And some people try singing a fifth higher singing or playing. So you start on G. One, two, three, four. And we can combine the fifths and the octaves. So now you can choose. Uh, you could sing the high octave, the low octave, the high fifth or the fifth in the middle whichever you want. One, two, three, four. Now, you might in this line, congratulations, it starts with a C, but two lines later, Danny Ellis, it starts with a D. And small differences like this are very usual, and we can have these small differences also simultaneously. And you can also make little variations, and those can be different from one person to another. And we enjoy the sound of having everybody sing more or less the same tune, but not exactly the same. But we're really well together with the rhythm for our conductors walking and with the words that tell the whole story. So what we've got so far is singing the tune, fifths and octaves, little variations, and we can do all of those things together from congardentes, one, two, three, four.
good. You were amazing. Just fantastic. Well done, everybody. OK, next thing. We can make a drone. Now, some instruments produce the drone all the time, like bagpipes. So we can make a drone. This will be on the final of the mode, the keynote in modern terms, or also on the fifth. And in whichever octave you like, it could be a high drone or a low one. The tune can be on the top of the drone, underneath the drone or in the middle. It's all good. If you're singing a drone, put lots of energy into the text and the rhythm, even though you're all on one note. So have a go at some droning. Concadentes. One, two. So now a whole new thing, and this comes from um, a manuscript uh, by Jerome of Moro Moravia, a manuscript for the um, fiddle. It's a practice where just for certain notes, you can make a harmony around the melody, usually underneath the melody. You can make a harmony around the melody on certain notes. For example, it's quite easy to do it at the cadences, but you can do it anywhere. Now, for, this is now a matter of style. This is quite a different thing from what we sometimes hear in this music, a, a kind of sort of mock Irish style, which I think is not so medieval. So we don't play one note and then play another note and then come back to the first note. It's not a changing drone. Sounds great, but it doesn't sound medieval, it's just Irish. We hear a lot of this sort of Irish mock medieval around, but this is not what Jerome of Moravia is describing. He's describing changing for one note. What we're doing here is not, we're not changing the drone, we're making one note that harmonizes with the melody. So this practice comes from the melody, not from the drone. Let's try it. Sing the melody, play the melody, and just sometimes change one or two notes and then get back. One convalent is one, two, three, four. So that's the idea of this changing one note. Now, in this style, we have to think carefully what we do with the thirds. We can use a third, but we can't sit on it. We can't finish on it. And a very good way to use a third is uh, if we look at the refrain, we could make a third moves out to a fifth. Or we could make a third above 
where the two parts come together from a third to a unison. So this is the very good way to use a third. Go through a third, don't finish on it, but finish on a fifth or a unison. And the same is true with the sixths. We don't ever want to sit on a sixth. We don't want to finish on a sixth, but we can use it. So with a sixth, bring it down through the five and finish on five. Or even better, from the sixth, the two parts go outward to make the octave. If we do anything that is in the same interval in parallel for a long time, we want it to be parallel fifths or fourths, but not thirds. So the normal way that we harmonize around the campfire with a guitar, where we sing in thirds, that's not part of this style. So, so far we've got uh, unison fifths and octaves. We've got playing a little bit differently. This is called heterophony. And we've got this possibility to change the melody just for one note here and there. And we've got control of the thirds. If we go through a third, that's great, but we shouldn't stop there. We've got to finish on a unison, a fifth, an octave. When we did the first experiments with this style, I encouraged the singers to do lots of experimenting. And so sometimes some thirds happened by mistake. And so we had the joke that um, every time we heard too much third, the third police would arrive. Na, 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 na. In some countries, the police work in sixths. So um, now there's a way that we can put together some of these ideas where we might start off with a melody and then find our way onto a drone. So I started with the melody and I found my way to the drone. So this, this is a way that you can use bits of melody and bits of to a drone note, jump to the drone note and stay there for a while. Then when the melody comes past you, you get back on the melody again. So have a go with this and uh, sing the melody and then find your way to a drone, find your way back to the melody. See how you get on. So we're going to sing, play together now. Sing the melody, find your way to a drone note, stick on the drone note, come back to the melody again. Oh, uh, Gunda Dentis. One, two, if what you're doing right now isn't perfect, the idea is to get, just understand the ideas that we're, we're talking about. And it does take some time just practicing. And the best way to practice is allow yourself to go wrong. Try some things. And when it goes wrong, into your fingers. So what we have so far, we have the unison, the fifths and the octaves. 
little variations in one voice or another, drones, this idea of following the melody but changing one note just sometimes, this idea of fifthing where you and back to a melody. And we can mix together all of these ideas. So do whichever you like and practice changing at the end of a phrase, whatever you just did, do something different in the next phrase. So uh, from the beginning, in hoc natalizio, one, two, three, four. 